wish you were one of those influencers with raving fans who binge on your every word, consume all your content, buy everything you have to sell, and demand even more? Then stay tuned while Authority Magazine columnist and BuzzFeed contributor Tracy Hazard shares strategies, tips, and tactics from top videocasters, podcasters, authors, and social influencers on creating that bingeable factor. Now, let's join Tracy as she explores how to rise above all the digital noise with The Binge Factor. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The Binge Factor. I'm Tracy Hazard, and I have the other half of the media casters team today. I told you when we interviewed Karina Belizzi that I was going to have Julie Loken on, and I have her today. So I have the other half of the team, but I'm obsessed with her show obsessed, right? She she's the show is called obsessed with humans on the verge of change. And I just love that. It's just such a great title and it's so well done. And she has the complexity of multiple hosts in the whole thing. So it's going to be fascinating to talk with her about that show, talk about the mission and what she's doing with media casters along with Karina. And I'm just so excited to have bring her to you today. So let's get on with it. Julie Loken is the co-founder of media casters, the Omni media company providing tools for underserved entrepreneurs through podcasting, publishing, and presenting. Julie is the podcast host of two podcasts, Obsessed and The Media Casters, which both enjoy global rankings. As founder of The Media Casters Publishing House, Julie uses her unique brand of relationship building to launch new writers and take them to bestsellers. Her own love for writing and business development were married in her entrepreneurial series, Hustle Smart, which reached number one on Amazon. Julie's passion for advocacy and business development was born out of a desire to amplify the voices of those making an impact. She lives outside of Chicago with her husband, four sons, and her sidekick, Violet, a French bulldog, who does not make any sounds during podcasts that we can hear. <laughs> I love people who podcast with their dogs. Mine's usually at my feet. Uh, right now, she's locked out of the room because she couldn't behave herself. <laughs> but I'm so excited to bring Julie Logan on, so let's get to it. Jewel, thanks so much for joining me. I'm obsessed with podcasting just like you are, but obsessed your show. I mean, what made you want to start a podcast about that? Tracy, it was kind of a dare, actually. And <laughs> I had no idea what podcasting was. I just, we kept getting asked to be on different podcasts and my co-hosts on Obsessed, they're like, Julie, we have to do a show. We have to do a show. So I'm, I said, okay, why not? Let's do a show. Simple as that. So you have two co-hosts. I mean, that this, so there's a trio here. Is yes. that complicated? Did it work? It, did it make it harder to get started? It was very, very complicated. We actually had four co-hosts at the beginning. And <laughs> I don't know any other podcasts that have four co-hosts at the beginning. It was like the Beatles, but we really didn't know how would people actually understand who's talking and what we're talking about it could get really confusing we had to practice so much up to when we actually launched our podcast so we did a couple months of just practicing to figure out how we would even go about this and well we I mean it's amazing you even thought of it because most people will do I mean I have it happen where you have two women co-hosts mm -hmm. and, and they don't even realize their voice sounds so similar to the mm -hmm. listener yeah and we understood that it would be confusing so at the beginning we thought that we would create almost characterizations of ourselves to amplify what we're each speaking about. So we have an attorney who is I, Julie, we have a holistic nutritionist, a therapist, and we have a self-esteem expert. So just kind of amplifying our characters, I thought would be the way to go, but it really morphs into whatever the show is going to morph into. And we take the lead of our guests as well. Now, when you started it, did you have a goal? No, nothing. You and you're, you're wanted like to laughing do it. like, no. <laughs> well, it was on a dare. And it was just, we knew it was an extension of what we were doing in our professional lives, helping others really obtain their best life and think a little bit differently how they do their days. So there was no goal. There was no monetization. And we were so green and so new. We had no idea the power of podcasting. We had no idea of how it literally in the first year changed the trajectory of everything we were doing. In what way did it change things for you? Well, people who never would have given us the time of day, and I'm not saying that to slight anyone, but there would be no reason to have a conversation with a lot of these people. 
all of a sudden we were sitting in the same studio as these people. And I would ask people, Oprah, Oprah-esque style people, Dr. Laura Berman, who's a love, sex and relationship expert on the Oprah Winfrey network. She was sure I'll be on your podcast. No problem. And I was like, what, 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 why is she talking to us? But we were having such prolific conversations with people that that really blew our minds. And I knew there was something then at that moment when people were saying yes to us to have these conversations, everything changed. Oh, that's so, so true. Mm -hmm. Now we want, we're obviously you're on the binge factor here. So somewhere along that way, you must've found out you had binge listeners, people who are joining your show Mm -hmm. as a listener and then listening to everything you had and Mm -hmm. going back to episodes. When did you realize that? Or did you realize that? I think it was maybe six months in when we start, I started getting random messages or emails or just people really getting engaged in the program, in the show. It blew my mind because I, and beyond that, that people were listening to our podcast in the Philippines, in Africa, in Europe, in South America. It, I could not believe our voices reached to those levels. I think that was one of the most fascinating things for me too. It's like, really, you're listening to all our episodes. Like we did a hundred to me. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It was one of those things. Well, that's fantastic though, that you came to that place. Now, Mm -hmm. did you find though, that the logistics of setting up the show, getting it started, figuring all of that out was easy for you? Or was it because you had three of you to, you know, four of you in the beginning to do, to, you know, to split up the work. Did you find that that was an easier path for you? Well, there always has to be a leader, Tracy. And I took that lead for some reason, they all talked me into it. And then I was the one that took the lead, but the sound quality was off on a lot of our uh, audio. And I just took it upon myself to buy the girls mics and we really worked on it. I did not want to do a half-ass show. I wanted to do it with quality. I, and even though we didn't know what we were doing exactly, I wanted to make sure that we did it right. So we did hire a producer to help us in the initial stages. And that was very helpful. And if you go back and does, is this cringeworthy, if you will, like listening to your very first podcast, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I sound like that or said that. And it's an evolution, I think, but really just making sure first and foremost, the audio is decent. (laughs) <laughs> I know. Now, it, I really hope our listeners out there, if, the, if you've got one of those shows where you do have some of those early cringeworthy, and we all have them, like, let's face it, we all have them, but our <laughs> listeners still listened. So don't get rid of them. Don't get perfectionist mm-hmm. about them. Don't re-record right. them. Leave them there because your growth matters too, right? Mm-hmm. So Jules, I have to say, listening to your show, there's such a nice rapport between you mm-hmm. and your co-host that, that mm-hmm. there's this really nice balance of it. And uh, and it's not a competition for asking questions, mm-hmm. which, which you think that it might turn into. It's like, oh, I've got, you know, I've got this expert on and I want to ask all the questions and someone dominates the conversation. It doesn't, it kind of naturally mm-hmm. flows. Is that planned or does that happen naturally now? Very naturally, but we use the mic on mic method, meaning everyone's m- muted on the podcast. And then when somebody unmutes, we know that they're the next one to speak. So it made it very easy. It took a while. And then we'd all be so you're staring using at each cues. other. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And we've been, we would stare at each other. There'd be silence and I'd be like, Oh, we got to cut this silence out. But you know, knowing that there's an editor behind you, you know, that it doesn't have to be perfect and messy is beautiful. And that is something that we've really embraced in terms of being vulnerable in our stories that we do share. And you just do it, do it messy. It's okay. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you found. You mentioned before about just being so surprised that guests wanted to be on your show that we're at that high level, but you know, how do you go about deciding uh, who's going to be a guest, getting those great guests uh, going out there and doing the ask? How, How do you decide that as a team? Well, we are looking for those stories and we're working in alignment with the Brene Brown book, her new book, Atlas of the Hearts, which we're obsessed with right here. And it's, it's finding those stories, those real poignant stories, experts in their field, people that have a story who can change the lives of our listeners. And that's really all that matters. That's what I keep focused on. So we're, we're all 
we're asking all these different people. And by the way, it does not matter if you have 1 million followers on your Instagram account, because I have had my most success with our guests by people that have an engaged audience around them, even if it's 100, 200, 500 people. Find those guests that have a really and tried and true engaged audience that would do anything for them. Meaning they'll listen to anything that's posted or shared. So we do such good advice. Engaged, an engaged, um, an engaged guest who has an engaged audience around them. And do you do you have do you invite more people than you expect on in the show and just record at the pace? You know how do you how do you logistically handle that? Because there's three of you maybe going out there and asking. You could end up with too many guests. Um, that's never a problem. <laughs> you know, <laughs> having too many guests is a good thing. <laughs> never. Never, never a problem. But I think our, you know, you work out a cadence after doing this for some time, you work out a cadence, it, you know, obviously I have not proclaimed myself as a leader, but I, there has to be a leader. So I'm really on the forefront of finding people, curating people, my other co-hosts, Tia and Mika, they are definitely helpful and they all have their special niche. So I, I love to talk to people that I have never had a conversation with or have no idea what their expertise is on, because I'm always learning something as well. So there is a cadence. There's definitely a cadence that that makes us balanced. And anything we're obsessed with, if Tia or Mika is obsessed, my co-hosts are obsessed with something, I become obsessed with. And I become obsessed with all my guests. I always tell them that I am going to become obsessed with you in a healthy way, not a stalkerish way. <laughs> I, I become obsessed with them. And that's where the magic is. For me, at least, these relationships that I've built with the guests on the show, that was the surprise that <laughs> blew me away. I love that. That is so powerful. So your listeners are obviously an important component as well. Mm -hmm. How do you increase your listeners and get more engagement from those listeners? Well, I, at, you know, at the beginning, I was pumping out a lot of episodes weekly, three to four a week. I would do mini sods, daily doses of inspiration. We are self-improvement podcast. So those smaller little spurts between our big interviews once a week. And I did see growth happen. I did see growth gradually happen as we were doing those like little mini sods between our major episodes. I think also really engaging and always asking for our listeners to rate, review, subscribe. If I read your review on the air, I'm going to send you some swag. I have swag. So we will send you a mug or a hoodie or something along those lines, engaging with them and asking them to share on your Instagram page, DM us at our Instagram page. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us if you're struggling with this situation. I think is a great way. And it's so surprising when we do hear from people, it blows my mind that we have this effect just through the platform of podcasting. Well, you know, I think that personal touch is really makes a difference in the way that you engage. Cause I've watched your social and you know, as we're, we're oh, connected, that's how we met, right. Mm -hmm. You know, we're connected over there, mm -hmm. but I love how, how you do connect with that. And I want to shift a little bit into your community because mm -hmm. this, I think is sort of the path. My next question is usually about monetization, but here I want to shift a little bit to that. You're on, honestly on embarking on a whole new venture, which I seems know. to have come out of podcasting. So media casters and media casters mm -hmm. has its own network under the mighty networks, which mm -hmm. I love the way that you mm -hmm. um, engage with the community every day. I get the newsletter every evening. It just oh catches gosh. me up when I miss it. And I'm always, you know, checking out what, what Julie has to say, you know, like what's going on over there because it posts it right there. Mm -hmm. And so it keeps me engaged, even if I'm not actively engaging in the community. So I think mm -hmm. there's really kind of an interesting dynamic where we may not even know the passive engagement that we're receiving. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, oh, Julie said this today. I'm going to have to mm -hmm. go back and check it out. And then they come back into our communities and engage. So I think that's happening for you. So let's talk a little media casters. Mm -hmm. When did that sort of start where you spun off from this saying, I'm so obsessed with podcasting, not mm -hmm. just my show, but I'm now ready to do another one and a whole network mm -hmm. in, in the process. I know. And it's such a fascinating story just because my background really is in journalism and writing. And then I became a lawyer. And then I was like, I'm not sure if I should be a lawyer. And then I did this and that. But I always knew I loved communication. I loved the ability to write, to share. So 
I opened a publishing company. Why not? Let's do it. And that was a fantastic experience for me. And then I started podcasting. I try, you probably can tell, like whatever's put in front of me, I just do it because why not? You know, except jump out of an airplane. I've not done that. And I don't think I'm going to do that. But so I have this passion for writing, publishing, and then also podcasting, speaking. And I knew there was something and something that entrepreneurs needed because you get to a point where you are just spinning your wheels. You write a book and no one reads it. You have a podcast. No one's really listening. You want to speak on stages, but you don't know how to do this. I knew this was a pain point for a lot of entrepreneurs and creatives. So then I met Karina Belizzi and she just one day said, we're going to do something someday. And I'm like, okay, okie dokie. And subsequently months later, we were talking and we both agree about how difficult it is to use your voice to make an impact on the world, especially for creatives and entrepreneurs. Let's do it. So we did it. And we're really building a community around our podcast. Our podcast is just one arm. The media casters is just one arm of our community. We also have a meetup, which I don't know. Do you remember meetups back in the day? I do remember meetups. Oh my God. It seems old now, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like so old. And I'm, I'm always trying to think outside the box. So I went on to the, com the computer and I'm like, I'm going to check out meetup. I'm going to make a group called the secrets of podcasting. I didn't check it for a month and I looked and there's like 200 people signed up for this group. I'm like, wait, we have to do something. And that just speaks to the need of building a community, a community where we can be of service, a community where we can give people the tools that we know from what we've done before. So long answer to your short question. <laughs> so how is it juggling two shows now? It's easy breezy. How about you? Have you, you know? <laughs> well, I've got eight. So yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. lot. It's when it's your passion, when it's your purpose, you don't get burnout because you can have all those rejections. You can go into the fade. You can, you know, hit those roads, the bumps in the road. And it's okay. Because if you're aligned with your purpose, then nothing else matters. How are you finding media casters, at, like the response from the community? We love it. I, there is something about it. Every time we have office hours or a meetup group, we have a, such a great group. And I see the magic is, is when they start communicating to themselves, like Karina and I don't have to facilitate the conversation. And that's really the power. And we're starting to see that amongst it's our like community. a tipping point now. It is. Um, yeah. That's fantastic. I, now, they need a know, little help at the beginning, but you know, we just push them like little yeah. mamas. We push them a little bit. Well, I want to talk about your publishing side in a minute, but I do want to talk about your binge factor because, you know, hey, this is why we're here. I binge. get to do a little psychoanalysis of my own, although I, oh. you know, I have no, I have no training in that, but I do have a lot of training in listening to podcasts and yes, interviewing do, and doing all of that. So that is my, my experience here. So, you know, the, I think both on media casters and on obsessed, mm -hmm. what I'm seeing from you is just this amazing collaboration in action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what you do so well. Mm -hmm. And it, it's so inspiring to me to see women collaborating together in such a fantastic and powerful way. You're doing it with this high level of intelligence, this high level of heart. And those two things are combining into what is making all of the shows that you're participating in mm -hmm. just fantastic tools. So thank you so much for making your binge factor be about collaboration. Mm -hmm. Well, you're welcome. I, I don't think I could do it alone. I don't even speaking here just about myself. I get like a little nervous because I just don't like talking about myself. I know people probably think that's ridiculous, but having strong women around you, you are the sum total or the five people you surround yourself with. So I'm very particular and having those people that, that are strong where you're weak, I think is something that uplifts, uplifts me every day. And it's accountability too, right? So you can't like blow off a recording or <laughs> you gotta <laughs> get right. it done. That's right. Well, what advice do you have for those still on the fence about podcasting out there? just do it. Stop overthinking. Just do it. You have a voice. Understand. Don't do it for the money. Don't do it for the listenership. Do it for you and your mission and your purpose. Do it because you know you're meant for more. 
and when we overthink and we we stop in our tracks we become our own worst enemy and we disengage so just do it don't think so much about it it's fun you can do it for a relatively low price point but find those people to connect with that understand and have gone before you I love that. Such great advice. You know, I would be totally remiss because you brought her up before to not ask another power woman in the industry, Mm -hmm. your thoughts about what, what's gone on with Brene Brown and the Spotify situation. So for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to catch you up a little bit quickly Mm -hmm. here, and then we'll get Jill's opinion on this. But Brene Brown had, um, was very upset by all of, um, Joe Rogan's comments and all kinds of different things decided that she would pause her show on Spotify to regroup, get in with the Spotify leadership, understand what was going on and find out what her options were. Mm -hmm. She then posted a blog about a week later that said she's unhappy about the idea that she has to do what she needs to do. She can't disassociate her brand from Spotify and from Joe Rogan, Mm -hmm. Um, that, that there's no possibility for her to do that because she's under contract but she's there for her listeners and she's going to keep going with her show. Mm -hmm. And so it seemed like she came back to podcasting a little under duress, I think, Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately for her. Um, But what are your thoughts about that? I mean, you know, you have an attorney background on top of it. So I bet you have some statements about contracts that people should know about. Well, that's the first thing I thought of though, that I knew she was bound by quite a nice juicy contract. Right. And while she was taking her stand while she was using her voice, I felt she was strong-armed, if you will, that she had to continue. She just, her attorneys probably told her she had to continue. There's no way out of this. Uh, I I admire her for taking a stand. I admire her for really differentiating her voice from everyone else's because when people are doing it for money, you know, it, we, when you're doing things for money, yes, money is great. It's wonderful, but it screws up a lot of things. And I think that she really is a beacon in terms of showing us as podcasters that you can do what you want to do, but you also have a voice and what you're doing and where you're doing it and with whom. And she clearly didn't like Joe Rogan. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea why. Exactly. Yeah, no idea. Well, I know you're so obsessed with um with her book and everything. And I have not, I have not. It's on my it's on my bedside table. I haven't gotten to it oh, yet. You I have keep, it. I have it, but I have not gotten to it yet. I know Atlas of the Heart. It's just a, I mean, it sounds great. I just haven't had moments because it's been such a busy month for you me. You don't so read far. it through. It's just like it's yeah. almost a reference book. Oh, so will. I could pick it up and not yeah. be, see because that's my see, I'm a I'm a read through girl. Like I, when yeah, I do it, no. I'm gonna sit down and that's two this hours later. I'll be done with my book. So, okay, well, good to know. Then maybe I'll have to pick it up and start like dabbling in it then. But (laughs) tell me why you're so fascinated, why you're so obsessed with it. Well, she's done such prolific research on the 30 core emotions. And this is really a reference book. And I sound like I'm, I asked her to be on the podcast. She said, no, actually. Well, now she may have to, because I mean, you're selling books here. Brene, (laughs) come on, girl. I like carry this around. It's like not light either. Um, (laughs) You know, it just, you know, it, it's a reference book. So let's say Tracy, I want to ask you a question. Like, how, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling like things are uncertain or do you feel like you're comparing yourself or things don't go as planned or are they different than just they seem Are things different? You know, how, where are you today? Let's just say, do you feel like you're falling short or you're searching for connection or is your heart open or life is good? Pick one. Oh, well, I think I, I think today I'm really energized because today is one of those days where I get to connect to a ton of people. So I love that. That's my energized day. And you're, and you are all about connection. So connection really speaks to belonging. And so chapter nine places we go when we search for connection, and then it gives you the different emotions like belonging, fitting in connection, disconnection, insecurity, and inv- invisibility and loneliness. So it goes the gamut and then you can refer to that. So understanding that you're not alone when you're feeling connected or disconnected, or if you're feeling overjoyed or in despair, I think it's just an amazing reference book. Easy read. Don't read it through because you can read it through, but I just find it something that I refer to all the time. That's interesting. Sitting next, right next to me. Well, that, that reminds me of, you know, I have a, 
uh, Louise Hay's book on my uh, bedside table. And that is one of those. You have ones, a lot of I'll, books. Yeah, I, I'm a big reader. I used mm-hmm. to read like 300 books a year. So wow. I, yeah. So Louise Hayes's though, has always been on my bedside table because mm-hmm. there'll be this occasion where I'll want to flip through it and just like go to a chapter mm-hmm. that I know it's, yeah. You know, you kind of have these things like your Bible right next mm-hmm. to your bedside, whatever it is yeah. that you need, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to give you and, and energize you. I love that. But Let's talk quick before we go about publishing, because I really want to touch on your publishing Mm -hmm. business and what you're doing there, because obviously Mm -hmm. you're passionate about books. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is your, you know, for me, I'm this giant reader and I have yet to publish my book. Uh oh. Okay. Wait, I, wait, I know wait, wait. it's Don't all, it, this me, Tracy. I, it's in final editing. I, I oh my gosh! It. So I have gotten it that far, but it's been in final really? editing for a really long time. Yeah, and so you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, I think when you're such a fan of the printed media, like I am, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it makes it more daunting. So what did, what advice do you have for that? And and how does your publishing business work? Well we're baby publishers. I'm just going to preface that. I, you know, what we, the onus for it was that I had a lot of authors as clients and I saw them pour all their heart, their love, their joy, their sorrows, everything into this manuscript. And then they would be sending out queries to let's say 600 publishers and they would get no response. And I was like, something has to be done differently, you know, because first of all, I would go into deep depression if I wrote this like beautiful novel, 600 page novel, and it was just dismissed. But really there has to be a way to do it. And we have KDP, which is the Amazon self-publishing um, software. It's made, made it really easy. And people just throw stuff up there as well, unedited. It's like crazy. Anyone can- Yeah, I can't do that. I, I definitely yeah, can't do You that. have to do it right. <laughs> Number one rule, you have to have an editor. Cause I can tell right away if you don't, if you didn't have your book edited. Um, even editors need editors, coaches need coaches, therapists need therapists, but, you know, I just saw such an inequity. So what we're doing is we're really promoting authors who are, who have empowering words, who are educating and entertaining really positive focused books, as well as we are trying to do the same for our authors and give them all the tools. So if you want to self-publish, these are the tools that you need to be able to do this correctly, do it right. That's so interesting. You said the word promote because so often mm-hmm. I find that publisher, you, you think, oh, I'm going to get a publisher. It's going to help me promote my book. No. And promotion isn't actually anywhere no. in the contract. No. And there's nothing there. You're, about promotion. you're promoting. Right. Yeah. And if you're a traditional publisher and I don't know how you're going to, what route you're going to go, if you're going to self-publish, but you are your brand. Tracy Hazard is her brand. So establishing your brand. And I'm not saying like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You don't need to have Instagram like a thousand followers, 10,000, whatever. It does not matter. When's the last time you bought a book up Instagram? For me, never. Works. Yeah. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's about creating your brand, getting those people to speak to. And I mean, podcasting is an amazing way. And I encourage authors, although authors very often, especially, and I hate to pigeonhole or stereotype, but the fiction authors I see having problems with their abilities to speak and promote themselves, but it's so necessary. So, you know, how do you see nonfiction authors do that too? Like some of my, some of my worst interviews Mm -hmm. were authors Mm -hmm. and because they were sort of like, well, just read my book Mm -hmm. and podcasting is such a giving media, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We need to share a lot here. We need to tell Mm -hmm. stories. We need to expand on them. And, and then I just will naturally want more. It's, you don't have to you know, mm-hmm. you don't have to hawk the book. <laughs> like it doesn't have, it's I so just want to learn and like you, and then I will buy the book. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're going to get you on it in, we're getting you on a book tour. You're going to go on the media junket, Tracy. You're going to be on po- podcasts. You're going to be on right press releases. We're going to get you on to, you know, it's not about social media. It's about really expanding your voice, doing book clubs, going on social audio, going everywhere that not everyone has gone. So it is, as an author, it, you are your brand. The easy part right now is writing your book. The hard part is keeping it alive. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, so, so but true. if you go away, your book the goes way away. You said that, that, so it's keeping that book alive after you've published it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is so amazing viewpoint of it. I am so looking forward to talking with you further about that, mm-hmm. and we'll have. Well, to I'm do so that. excited that you're writing <laughs> I, a book. Do you have a title, working title for your book? Uh, that's where we're debating right now. Actually, my team is all debating on the title because it's you know it's a, basically a how to podcast book so like you know yeah. not terribly exciting in terms of that but that we're doing the debate about is it going to do better digitally because it has a basic title or is it going to do better because it has a catchy title and that's that's catchy our debate title, right now. catchy title and then subtitle that is seo rich so that that's kind of where we're leaning mm-hmm. right now. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see where, we, where we'll see where it ends up, but it's getting close. This is um, like a cliffhanger. That's I know. I know if book. I, if I had a name in front of me right now, I'd, I'd tell I'd share it with you, but I like really don't because the team is still working on it. You know, this is a group effort. It is not just my book. Mm-hmm. Um, we had all of our entire team actually contribute wow. to the chapters from the company because, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not the expert in intro outro music. Like who not, I know about music. Stop. Yeah. Like really, I mean, I know we have it and you should mm-hmm. have it, but beyond that, <laughs> I, you know, what else am I supposed to say about it? So our, we had our team have some input, the team who chooses music day in and day out, give us some do's and don'ts. It was mm-hmm. awesome. So um, we've gotten the whole company involved in, in building the book, which I think is kind of unusual. Unfortunately, like you really can't list everybody on it. So it's going to be under my byline and Tom's byline, yeah, yeah. but makes we, sense. we did write 90% of it. So but why not how to create a binge worthy podcast? I I think that's where we're leaning is what, where it is. It, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think the title, the the main title that we're leaning towards, is just binge worthy and then 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 the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, because we, you know, I, frankly, the binge factor came out of the fact that I was repeating that so often in Mm -hmm. our previous show. And Mm -hmm. so we did a spinoff for it. So, Mm -hmm. so why not do that with the book too? And actually we're going to put the book into two pieces. So it's two books. Oh, wow. And one is on the, on the front setup side and the others on the marketing and promotion side so that it, so oh, that yeah. we separated it so that if you're already an existing podcaster, nice. you'd be able to t- pick up that book and, and still get that detailed information without having to read the whole setup side. And that book, I mean, you're already an expert. We all know this. You're already an expert, but it gives you that extra cachet of being an author. I mean, like I'm like over exaggerating, but the fact that you're an author and you're a podcaster. I mean, you can't beat that. And then you, you love to speak as well. So I love it's that speak. perfect, it's that perfect trifecta. I think so the three who P's. knew I was going to get advice here on the show, but I'm so I can't help myself. I love it. And you know what? That's, that's the fascinating part about podcasters. I love that they, uh, they have such a give and take and your show is fantastic. Oh, both your shows are fantastic, Thank you. but obsessed is really something for people to take a listen to mm-hmm. check out the way that you do it. It's an incredibly great model, the collaboration and dynamic, uh, interaction between all of the co-hosts and the guests, just fantastic. So so great work, Julie. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming on the show and sharing that it's with us. And we look forward to hearing more about media casters as we go forward. Oh, you know, you are because we love ourselves some patatize. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. So much fun when I get to talk with someone who can trip into let's talk about industry and what's going on in podcasting. And I hope that's not geeking out too much for for those audience members out there who don't have shows yet. But also, I think it's good for you to have this eye-opening view of what the industry is like and what's going on in that. I'm working on a new podcast on that side, and I can't wait to get input from other people like Julie Loken, like uh, Karina Beluzzi, you know, just so many people that like uh, many of the people that we have in our certified strategist program, their views, Marion Abrams, we had on recently, you know, those kinds of people are going to have great input into the new show that I'm working on. And so I'm so glad I have these wonderful, wonderful partners. I'm also so glad that I can bring you a show where you can get a behind the scenes peek at what it's like to work with three hosts and what it's like to run multiple shows and what it's like to start a network so that you can get an idea for what you want to do with everything that you're doing and where your goals are and what you're do what you, what you are doing with podcasting specifically. So Julie Logan, amazing, obsessed with humans on the verge of change and the media casters podcast. You're not going to want to miss them. Plus make sure you go to the blog post for this episode at the binge factor.com. So you can connect connect up to the media casters um, community and make sure that if this network interests you, you can join straight from there.
So looking forward to bringing you more media caster podcasters. So that's going to be a great conduit for us in the future. But I always want to hear from you. How was this episode? What do you think? How, should I bring more people like Julie? Should I bring more people from her community in? Let me know. And let me know if you qualify for the Binge Factor as well. So I'll be back next time with another Binge Factor episode. You've been listening to the Binge Factor Podcast. For more information on podcasting and video casting success tips and tactics, please go to thebingefactor.com. And be sure to listen to our other show for podcasters called Feed Your Brand. If you'd like to be interviewed on this show, as well as featured in Tracy's column, please go to thebingefactor.com slash guest and apply. 